Go back to your experiment a little bit, and, and is that an indication of why it works? And why, why does silver uh, help? Well, silver is ways? known as an antimicrobial substance. Some people think it's an yeah. antibiotic, but that's not correct. Oh. Antibiotic technically means anti-life, and mm -hmm. it is not anti-life. It is very promoting of our life. Mm -hmm. In fact, what it is doing via the release of the so-called cations or positively charged silver ions, like in that, in that coin experiment, mm -hmm. It wasn't that the coin was interacting with all of the water, but there was some level of dissociation. Going back to high school chemistry, I know it hurts to think <laughs> about it, right? Yes. It was like, wow, something popped off. What is that? It's like a cation that pops off of that, that solid silver. Now that cation is enough at very small quantities to retard microbial growth, whether it be uh, bacterial typically, but also fun fungal for a mm -hmm. lot of fungal species and viral. It limits or inhibits the reproduction of a, of a bacteria. Now that's at a very minute level. If we go to NASA, we realize that they utilize silver in, in very small quantities at parts per billion, in the parts mm -hmm. per billions. And that is utilized to rehabilitate, or if you will, or recirculate the wastewater, to purify it again for safety, for consumption of the astronauts. And this was used on the space shuttle as well for when it was done. And so it's a very powerful substance in very minute quantities. But many people, when they make colloidal silver, have no earthly idea what they're making. Mm -hmm. And they'll often make forms of silver that are bound into complex you know, molecules, bound together, like silver salts, mm -hmm. like silver chloride or silver nitrate. Which silver nitrate, by the way, is interesting because modern medicine chose silver nitrate of all the forms of silver, this was over 100 years ago, as their mainstay as silver as medicine because they would dilute it because it's a very caustic silver salt, but they would dilute it and drop it into the eyes of newborns. And that mm -hmm. would prevent uh, any type of microbial infection coming through the birth canal. Mm -hmm. Now there's a risk to that because it's a caustic silver salt. So you have to be very careful with it. But why did modern medicine at that time choose silver nitrate out of all of the silver forms or species out there? And it was because it had the highest rate of dissociation of that active state of silver. In other words, it isn't that silver that's chunked in solid and doesn't do anything, kind of mm -hmm. is there, but it's what comes off to interact with that biological environment or milieu or terrain. Mm -hmm. And so it was, a, it was their best bet that they had because they didn't have the technology to make what I utilize today called a silver hydrosol or a bioactive silver hydrosol, which isolates the active state of that silver in a pure water as pure as the far, you know, pharmaceutical grade purified mm -hmm. water. I'm not into big pharma, believe me, people that listen to my <laughs> show. But when we talk about purity, we can talk in terms of pharmaceutical grade purity. And in that context, the water is so clean that there is no salt or protein or other contaminant to bind with the silver that is in that charged positive state. And that particle size is very small, which is very critical. Why? Because you want to increase the surface area available per area of water. Now, if you have a large boulder or a big, you know, large chunk of silver, mm -hmm. the surface area is the only area that can interact with the outside sure. world, the environment. If you obliterate, you know, even a small piece of silver into 100 trillion, 10 hundred, you know, however, a lot of silver, you've now opened up that was locked in here, and it's mm -hmm. now open to the world. And so you need very little to achieve a lot. So at even at 10 parts per million, if you talk about a hydrosol nanometer sized particle, you have an incredible it's hard to fathom that you could have square miles or square kilometers of surface area in a drop of water. But that's how much can be released. So you now have an efficiency that can allow you to use small quantities. So you're dealing with almost homeopathic dosages, yet mm -hmm. very powerful interactions through all the properties that you want. Again, we can go through some more of those, but that's kind of the basis for this.